بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. In this video, I'm going to show how to solve the problem of major two exam using jQuery and Ajax. There are a few tricks that you have to understand because the response might be tricky, especially to process XML. So I'm going to show the different ways on how to solve. Uh, the problem of uh, suggest uh, by uh, processing a response in JSON and also in XML. Okay, so here we have the same interface. I have just put these uh, radio buttons. I changed them to JSON and XML to change uh, the response type. So you can see now in terms of the execution, it's going to be the same. Okay, I did not implement the uh, the uh, event listener here, but uh, as you can see, it shows all the different publications, whatever it is in XML or it is in JSON. So I'm going to show you how to solve this in terms of coding. So what I did here, I made a few changes. So I created two radio buttons, one uh, that is called JSON and the other one is called uh, XML. As you can see here, and uh, I added here uh, on change event so that I change the response type to JSON and the response type so to XML whenever these buttons are clicked on. So what does it do? The set response time XML is going to set a global variable here. So I will go now to JavaScript. I created a global variable that is called response time. Because in the query, when I will send here uh, to the server, to the PHP server, the keyword, I will send what the response type should be, whether it's JSON or XML. Okay, so this is a good way not to do two different scripts, one for JSON, one for XML. Uh, we can send the response type into the URL uh, query or the query URL. And then in the PHP here, okay, we're going to see if the response type is JSON. We're going to process it as JSON. And if the response type is XML, else we're going to send an XML. Okay, so this is a smart way in order to receive the response type uh, either using JSON or using XML. So here uh, there is a global variable defined in JavaScript which will be changed by set response type. And set response type will take JSON if you click on the radio button JSON and will take XML if you take, if you press the radio button XML. So I hope this is now clear. Okay, so now uh, if I press this XML the global variable will change to XML and if I press JSON it's going to change to JSON. And of course the response type is going to be sent in the query. Here. Now, in so when pressing any keyword we're going to execute as usual the suggest request, which is the Ajax request that we will send to the PHP on key app. Okay, so on key app. And here I'm going to use two different ways in jQuery. The first way is going to use the $.get method. And the second way is going to use the $.ajax method. There are two different ways that can be used. Okay, it's here. And I will tell you the difference between both. So let's see in the first way how to do it. So suggest request. Uh, here in the beginning, we're going to make document.ready and uh, function. So here we start with document.ready and then the function. Okay, uh, and then before uh, starting the get request in jQuery, of course, we're going to get the value. 
This is in jQuery from uh, the keyword that is typed. Okay, and this is now the div text where we are going to put the, the response or the suggested publications. And then $get. So first of all, I'm going to put the URL. And the URL here is going to contain the keyword and also the response type, which will be either JSON or XML, depending on uh, the value set by set response type, as I already explained. And then we execute the function. And here we have data and status. So data here, actually, it can be either JSON or XML, depending on what the server suggest.php will return to us. OK, so uh, here. Now let's start with the case of uh, JSON. If the response type is, is JSON, OK, I'm going to uh, process the information as uh, JSON as coming uh, from the server as JSON. So in this case, I'm going to use JSON.parse data. Uh, and by the way, there is a method that is called $.parse JSON, and uh, I've seen that it is deprecated. So you can use the normal JSON.parse in JavaScript here, because now I am sure that the response coming from the server is JSON for every uh, key pressed. So I'm going to use json.parse, and then it's the same, uh, the same code in JavaScript. Okay, as you can see here. And finally, I'm going to update the search suggest, which is the div that I have created to put the result. .html, and then this is the new text div text. As you can see, I'm going to add the first publication, the second publication, and the third publication coming from the server. If it comes with JSON, I'm going to use JSON.parse. Now, if the response is in XML, okay, there is a proper way in jQuery to, uh, to parse XML, which is simpler than in JavaScript. In JavaScript, we use a node value and uh, so on, uh, the structure that you know. But here, so data here, okay, as you can see, uh, this data, that is in a function. Now, I, I okay, I know that it comes as an XML uh, document. So I'm going to use dollar data dot find publication is going to find all publications. Okay, and here you have to understand the structure of the response sent by the server. Now I am in the server suggest.php. Of course, this is the same code that I used for uh, JSON in with JavaScript. There is nothing different. And here, okay, I send the code as, so I'm going to make a response. Uh, and then for every publication, I'm going to use the tag publication. And in JavaScript, I'm going to look for all publication tags. Okay, and here I will put the value of the publication title that I will find from the database. So we go to jQuery. So for every publication that comes in the XML document, so here we use dot each. This is like a for loop for each statement. For each value of publication, I'm going to execute the following code. Okay, here I use just console.log this the text just to show the publication name or title. And then I will add it to the div inside a paragraph. Okay, and this is where, and then finally I'm going to update the search suggest that HTML div text here, and as you can see now the result. Okay, is the following. I attached an event listener for JSON, but not for XML, as you can see in the code. But you can easily do it here. So now, <clears throat> okay, you can see now it works for both XML and JSON. Now, and now I'm going to show the second way on how uh, to solve that using the $.ajax method. So here in the code, I'm going to change on key up onto suggest request to, okay, which is uh, the second alternative for the implementation using the $.ajax instead of $.get. And there are a few differences here that we have to look at. 
so first of all I need to take the keyword and then I will have to look if the response type that is the global variable is JSON and I will use uh, dollar uh, document dot ready here and inside I will put the Ajax request and process the response so there are some parameters uh, optional parameters so this is asynchronous request so it should be set to true here and the type of the Ajax request will use get we can use post as well and here you have to specify what is the response type so the response type that we expect from the server okay for this attribute data type will be put to JSON and if it is XML we're gonna put it to XML so now I'm going to talk about JSON uh, case and here this is uh, the URL uh, the request query that they will send to the server which is uh, suggest.php and I put the keyword and then the response type it's possible now to hard code it to hard code the response type because I know that they will send in JSON and because I will expect a response from the server in JSON this is the case of response error uh, we have print error method which is defined here on the top which, which is going just to print uh, an error message and the type of error uh, this is useful for debugging and then and this is now the most important for us is the success in case of success if, it, uh, if the request is successful I'm going to execute this function and will take data as parameter and here data I am sure that it will come as JSON so I told the uh, JavaScript here that my response will be in JSON so I will do I don't need to make json.parse data here the data that will come and this is now one of the differences the data that will come here is, will be already parsed and is a JSON object okay so this one we did it here on the top we did json.parse data because data here will come as a string so we need to process it and parse it as a json to convert it to a json object so this is now the json object okay because here we don't know what is uh, okay uh, there is no way to specify that the response is json so there is no automatic parsing we have to explicitly parse the string into json here because i have specified that the data type is, uh, is is JSON so in the case of success this data is going to be automatically converted to a JSON object and here you can just using okay to extract the value okay so you know that uh, in my PHP script as you can see I formulated the JSON I can show you here the execution uh, if I put suggest and so let's see I'm going to response a key w0 w1 and w2 and then I will have the title this is my response now so this string is going to be automatically converted into a JSON object here so I can use data and then put the key because it is an associative array the JSON object okay and then I extract the value for uh, w0 w1 and w2 these are the three titles okay so now this is the difference data here is not a JSON string it's a JSON object because we have specified the data type here and the same way for XML we have the same thing the data type is now put as XML so in case of success this XML now represents the XML document itself okay the XML document and you can see here into the log so if I execute the following in XML here and I enable JavaScript console you will see okay I receive an XML document this is what I printed here in console.log so I will do the same thing I did here using the for each statement so this is we made for uh, data.find publication and here I'm going to do the same thing 
for XML find publication each function and here I'm going to update the div text and finally I will show the result into the search suggest uh, div by putting the new value using the HTML function okay and this is now the second way so these are two different ways on how to process JSON and XML using .get and the same for .post as well and also .ajax jQuery methods so this example gives you a complete understanding on how to uh, send a request and process the response uh, in Ajax using both XML and JSON. If you have any question for the final exam, because the final exam is going to be uh, related to uh, this uh, example here, to jQuery with Ajax, so you can send me an email.